I have not covered these two in a very long time. But given the amount of weird fan art that I get, I figured the topic of porn would be a great reintroduction. So, girl defined. Should I start dating if I'm struggling with porn? And oh, by the way, I don't really struggle with porn. Usually I just have a problem of being able to find a private moment. But that's not really a struggle with porn. So much as it's a struggle with myself. But yeah, you know, anyway, let's let's just continue. Let's let's just let's the world's message about, about pornography, you're gonna feel like, well, is it really that big yeah. of a deal? But as we dig into God's word and we start to see why pornography is such a counterfeit version of the beautiful yeah. Oh my god, is it is it gonna be that it's a counterfeit version of of like an authentic relationship? I can go on and on about the benefits of porn. Now granted I could go on and on about some of the downsides too, but let's <laughs> let let's hear them out. Let's hear them out design that God created sexual intimacy to be within marriage. What's up, sisterhood? This is my like personal wave. Like, what was it? <laughs> oh my God, that's almost as cringy as the beginning of a Paul and Morgan episode. You were supposed to join in, but you didn't. You know, like a, when you're at like a stadium, I guess we've, we haven't been in the stadium for a while, so we don't have our wave going. I didn't know two people uh, could do a wave. I'm yes, <laughs> one person can, look at me. <laughs> I want to welcome you to another video. If this is your first time here, you're going to think I am the weird one and she is the normal one, which is probably true. <laughs> um, okay, you're Bethany. Okay. I'm Kristen. I'm Bethany. I'm Kristen. We are sisters. And um, I will often have people when they meet us, they'll be like, I, I'm i just like you. Or people will be like, I'm like Kristen. And somehow y'all peg our personalities in like a certain sort of way. <laughs> but often you get... Okay. I'm going to go ahead and push ahead just a little bit. I'm not too worried about this part. This part doesn't concern me much. We're just going to turn on closed captions so we can see the content and you want to see this continue on. Come on over to our patron nope. and just whoever can find them. <laughs> um, and I I want to see that that continue on. And yeah. you do that by every video. You say, I'm going to pledge a dollar. Thank no. Nope. Yeah, so like many free one. products um, just as our way of saying thank you. Mm -hmm. And so if you sign up today by clicking the link below, you will get no. a question that is so good. And a lot of you have asked it. Yeah. And, you know, I think in the past, we as a society have viewed porn more as like a guy issue, right? Like yeah. in the churches, it was always a lot of men lust struggling in with porn or lust. And I think we are all recognizing that porn, lust, you know, sexual struggles, these are not just guy issues. These are human issues. Yes. They are um, a, a result of our sexuality being marred by sin, right? We have distortions. We have struggles because of sin in our lives in every area. Yeah. Of course, everything, everything falls to the wayside of the, the big bad sin. It's all sin's fault. I mean, if we get rid of sin, we'll lose Titus. And I'm, I'm not saying that that's not a bad thing or a good thing. I'm just saying I started with Final Fantasy X-2. And yeah. that includes sexuality and our sexual desires. And as women, we're not exempt from that. Nope. I've struggled. You've struggled. In fact, we share all about it. In our oh my God. Now I have the image of these two struggling with porn and I can't get it out of my eyes. I need brain bleach. Our book, Sex, Purity, and the Longings of a Girl's Heart. But let's talk about porn specifically. And if you're someone who feels like, yeah. man, I want to find freedom from this, but I am still stuck in it. And you're debating whether or not you should start dating. Maybe a guy's asked you out. You're like, man, I really, I'm really interested. I want to go out with him. Maybe you're already in a dating relationship yeah. and you're wondering like, is this okay? Is this not okay? You don't know. Yeah. Can I go and say right now as a guy, Dating a, a, a dating somebody who watches porn just makes conversations about it so much more easy because then we can talk about, hey, what things are you interested in? What things do you like? As opposed to, hey, no, yeah, I, I spent an extra two minutes in the bathroom and look, just don't go in there yet. I'm cleaning. Like th those conversations are so much easier when you both watch porn. Hell, you can even watch porn together. It's not even that bad of an activity, all things considered. You just have to kind of understand that, especially in the professional world, a lot of the stuff they're doing in porn isn't going to be as pleasurable as it looks on the camera. But that's not what you guys are concerned about, because you're not concerned with whether or not the couples have a fun time together. You're concerned about whether or not they're sexually pure, which I don't think is a very valid concern. They're, they're not going to be pure. We have tissues for that. Yeah. First of all, let me just say we're so glad that you're watching this video. 
that you're here with us. Totally. This is going to be a short conversation compared to what we just did over on our podcast. Yeah. The Girl Defined show, we had a full length conversation. It was like 45 minutes long talking all about whether you should date someone, a guy who is struggling with porn. Okay. So kind of a flip version yeah. of this. Now we're going to ask the question, should you <laughs> as the girl date a guy if you're the one struggling with porn? Okay. So this is, this yeah. is good. This is good stuff. So it's, listen to that. Po- is it good stuff? That sounds very self-aggrandizing. Like, if you're the ones that wrote the book, and if you're the ones that are saying, no, no, this is good stuff, good stuff, I get that this is marketing, but I don't know if this is marketing that would work on me. Podcast, and yeah. then this will make even more sense because we took a deep dive. But, you know, let's back up for a second. Yeah. Talk about porn. Because in our society, at least from what we've seen, it's very acceptable, right? Yeah. Like, pornography is very much, like, it's normalized. There's It's not normalized. It's not. People still argue that sex work isn't real work, and they do it at a at a very alarming rate. It's not normal yet. It's a billion dollar industry. It's encouraged. It's like, encouraged. I've seen, like you know, it's like I don't know Vogue or Teen Vogue, and they're literally yeah. encouraging you, like, hey, here are the top ten like porn films mm. that you can watch to kind of like start dabbling in that. Like, what? Yeah. You know, like it's very or even, you know, like as women. That might be a little weird for Teen Vogue, but. I mean, citation needed, I guess. And like, oh, it's empowering to be able to just do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. You know, like it is very much viewed as acceptable yeah. and normal and encouraged. Yeah. No, again, maybe it's just that I live in the American South. But here, if you mention that you're a porn actor, especially if you're a woman, that can kill your ability to do anything. In fact, actually, um, just yesterday... I had Brittany on, the person who was going to be running against Marjorie Taylor Greene for Georgia District 14, and her just doing burlesque and cosplay was considered too risque for her to be involved in politics. The Democratic Party kicked her out, essentially, for doing that. And and she did that years ago. So you can sit here and say, no, it's accepted, it's normal, it's normalized. No, it's not. It's not. It needs to be more normalized. It needs to be less strange and weird when you talk to somebody and they say, yeah, no, I do porn and that's what I do for a living. Sex work is still work. If I can work with my body to flip a burger, why can't I work with my body in other ways? If somebody's willing to pay me, that should be the one thing that matters, at least from like a market standpoint. But no, apparently purity is what matters here and they they have this weird flipped idea of what the world does and doesn't encourage right now. Yes, it is more normalized now than it was 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. But that doesn't mean that it's normalized. Not yet. And so if you're listening to the world's message about about pornography, you're going to feel like, well, is it really that big of a deal? But as we dig into God's word and we understand not just pornography, but like God's entire intent and design for sexual intimacy, for sex, we see this much bigger picture and then we start to see why pornography is such a counterfeit version of the beautiful yeah. design that God created sexual intimacy to be within marriage. But Okay, so porn is not something that is supposed to replace sex. It's something you do when you just want an orgasm. And if you do want sex and you cannot get it, then it's as close a replacement as you might be able to get. But <sighs> I might have to go into the benefits of this for a second here. Let's say that you're a person with a... a Uh, a sex drive and your partner is ace and they're willing to uh, fulfill your desires every once in a while, but they don't get as much out of it. So they don't really like doing it all the times that you do. What do you do then? Do you just sit there and and build up? Do you just sit there and, and, and deal with it and get frustrated, which can lead to sometimes being an actual asshole? Or do you just go do something like watch porn? If your relationship dynamic is one where that's been talked about and you agree that it's a, it's an okay thing for you to do then I don't see any reason why you shouldn't. I mean, the the alternative is literally letting yourself suffer for almost no reason. Now, there is, with as with almost anything, there is the chance of addiction. There is an issue with desensitization. But honestly, if we're all adults here in the conversation, maybe we should be talking about encouraging proper use of porn, encouraging porn to be used not in excess, but used when it's needed, when it's appropriate as opposed to overdoing it, I guess. But that's that's going to be something that is 
based on each individual person, their own lived experience on whether or not they can draw that line, whether or not they can work with that line. And at the end of the day, if you're going to just say it's counterfeit and that's going to be your big argument against it, that doesn't work. Especially in relationships where, again, you've got somebody dating somebody who might be ace and their only way of really getting release at the rate that they might want or need is to engage in pornography. Talking about porn, let's just... I Not to mention, I, I, got, I gotta go ahead and say this one as well. This one's very important. While a lot of th stuff in porn, especially uh, professionally produced porn, is not uh, as pleasurable as it looks like it is on screen, there's also something to be said about the ability for one to explore their kinks through watching porn. There are things that you might not know that you like, but by experiencing them almost vicariously through watching porn, you have the ability to discover those things and then discuss those things with your partner. Hey, I'd like to try this. I think I might be more sexually fulfilled if I do this. That's a healthy thing. That starts a healthy conversation for you and your partner. And porn can be a good way to start that conversation because you can see things and see if they look like they would be interesting for you to do. This is a pretty common thing in the BDSM community, especially if you can't go to like a munch or something and have people who do this all the time talk to you about it. Sometimes porn is the best way you can learn some of this stuff, at least in the beginning. I just want to read a few things. We actually have a whole chapter in this yeah. book, Sex, Purity, and the Longings of a Girl's Heart. It is a whole entire chapter all about some of the biggest hot button issues it's called real talk porn erotica and masturbation chapter 11 we <laughs> dig in we do not shy away but a few things to just consider as a christian a few things to consider as an atheist when i dig into masturbation i usually do it with my left hand i'm kidding i'm not talking about that right now just bad phrasing dig into masturbation Awkward phrasing there. Wondering, is porn a problem or not? Here's a few things to consider. Okay, first of all, porn, it's a mockery of covenant love. Yeah. Like, God created love, like, sexual intimacy to be within the context of marriage. It's in a covenant. It's be a beautiful expression, and porn totally mocks that. Yeah. It strips it of intimacy. How does... So, I have a question for you, too. If a married couple film themselves engaging in the intimacy of sex, and then they put it on the internet and they make money off of it, or even if they don't make money off of it, how does that strip marriage of its uh, intimacy? How does that strip it? They, they literally engaged as a married couple in the making of pornography. Hell, filming themselves may be the thing that makes it more intimate for them. It's different for every person. So I don't see how this is the case here. This is literally like, this is the same argument that conservatives make when they say that gay people having a marriage strips my marriage of its sanctity or its intimacy or its insert special buzzword here that they think that their marriage has that somebody else's marriage can take away from theirs. So I'm not 100% certain if I'm on board with this really vapid methodology. It strips it of covenant and just says anyone can enjoy nakedness, sex between anyone you can watch. It's for it's just for you to enjoy however you want. And God saying, no, that's a mockery of my intention for sexual mm -hmm. intimacy. That's the first If God intended for it to be any different, he necessarily had the power to create the world in which it wouldn't happen. And he actively chose not to. If God is omniscient, he knew the end logical result of every action he took, and if he's omnipotent, he had the ability to engage in any different action. And he actively chose the world in which we would get the ability to create porn. Just food for thought. First thing. Second thing, porn totally degrades God's image bearers. You know, yes. it's easy to think, oh, they're just actors. You know, they're, I'm just watching people on a screen. But those are real humans. And whether yeah. they're there by choice or by force, which that's a whole nother conversation, when you engage in that... That's it. That is another conversation. If porn is made and it is not being made uh, with the enthusiastic consent of both adults or as many adults as you can cram onto the screen, then it shouldn't be made at all. Exploitation is bad and wrong. And I figured I needed to go ahead and say that because there's going to be some douchebag in the comment section that's going to mention that I didn't, I'm sure. 
you are taking part in that. Yeah. You are degrading God's image bearers by engaging in their sin as well. Okay. Engage <laughs> degrading God's image bearers is my kink. Okay, another reason For why sure. porn is so damaging. Porn warps our longings and desires. And there are there is scientific <laughs> scientific studies. <laughs> scientific studies and evidence and statistics showing that porn actually causes problems just in even in our brain connection. Neurological level. Connecting, yeah, neurological level, connecting to other humans in a really deeply intimate way. And so You're right. Excess use of porn can cause things like desensitization. However, I do not trust you two to give me that evidence. One, I know you won't. I know you didn't. This is an edited video, so you had every ability to provide your citation. And you didn't. Just know that that's the divide for me. If it's a VOD, take it from a live stream, that's why there's not stuff down there. If it's an edited video, that's where there will be citations. And there's a clear divide in my stuff where that is. You made an edited video here. You had every ability to provide a citation. You did not. So unless, if, if you're going to explain to me the exact ways in which this happens, the frequency in which it happens, and the paper that says this, then cool. But you're not doing that. You're just going to go, porn bad, does bad things to brain, science says so. No context, no clarification, just ideology. It actually warps our desires, our longings, even on a physiological level. And then lastly, yeah. porn is a force, is a false form of worship. So when we are addicted to porn and we are just engaging in that lust-filled desire to yeah. watch that, we are truly, we're not worshiping God first and foremost in our hearts. Porn, sexual... I don't worship God when I play video games, so the fuck what? Look, if if everything in your life, every, every ounce of every minute is captivated by trying to worship a deity. I'm sorry, but even within the context of the Bible, if you're a Christian, you're going to be doing that forever. For eternity, there will be no end to it. You're going to go to heaven and you're going to do that. So why can't God or you go, hey, I'm going to have eternity worshiping you. I only get maybe... 60 to 80 years here. Can I do my own thing while I'm here? So long as I'm also a Christian? And then do all of the 24-hour worship BDSM session with God up in the sky later? When, you know, I'm going to be doing it forever? Uh, just, please, I, from a Christian perspective, what is the negative effect of engaging in anything here if you are a christian especially if you are a salvation by faith christian what is the negative effect to engaging in anything down on earth god will be disappointed so the fuck what you're a sinful person all sin is equal you can't avoid it you're going to be disappointing him merely by existing as a human being in a sin-filled world and that disappointment's going to fade as soon as you're cleansed of sin when you walk into heaven anyway. So what the fuck is the argument for not enjoying yourself while you're here? I don't see one. And I don't think I've ever actually seen one. Honestly. Like, after about 13 or 14, I think the logic of that kind of broke for me. And that was back when I was a Christian that has become the ruler and God is saying you can't serve two masters yeah. like you either I have to be be the king of your heart or sin is going to be be the king of your heart you can't have both and so and that means that God is functionally not able to engage in a polyamorous relationship because he can't have compersion for sin what a cuck yeah those are just a few really fast <laughs> Ow. Like, just that that laugh you know, hurt the world accepts porn God doesn't. It's yeah. not his best. He has something so much better for us. Cool. Then we'll get that when we get there. Let people enjoy themselves now. Fuck. But if you find yourself in that place struggling, should you, in light of even what we just shared, yeah. you know, should you in engage in a dating relationship? Yeah. And I think that's the answer we're trying to we're we're trying work to towards. find and work towards. And I would say, like, we here at Girl Defined Ministries and just from many other wise people who are much older and wiser than us, kind of like 
unanimously agree that it is not wise to be in a dating relationship argument from authority that's a fallacy i don't care what their ages are i don't care that they're older and wiser than you by your estimation give me a good reason that stands on its own if you are struggling with porn or if the guy is struggling with porn go listen to the podcast we'll link it below for that but um i think we would wholeheartedly agree on that mm -hmm. like it is definitely not a good idea to engage in a dating relationship when you are addicted to pornography and the reason now now i have a question where does your line stay for addiction because is it that you're addicted to pornography and that's the problem or do you view viewing pornography as a problem and all of that you view as addiction is is because finding freedom from that sexual addiction it's hard it takes a lot of focus it takes a lot of work and accountability um to find freedom in the, that area and god wants you to have that freedom that's why he sent christ for freedom he's you know set us free we aren't meant to be slaves to sin any longer that's why christ came in through his power and through the ha you said christ came power of the holy spirit there can be freedom but it's hard and yeah. it's hard work and it takes a lot yeah. of effort um and being in a dating relationship, you know, where you are like, you know, trying to love this other person, get to know this other person, um, invest into that relationship while you've got this huge struggle. Like, don't diminish it like this. We need freedom from this, sister. Yeah. Like, we've got to It's not just going to go away It's not on just going to go away. And the relationship, you may be like, well, it'll probably resolve itself once, you know, like as I, as I, you know, have this man in my life. Like, no, don't believe that lie. There are so many marriages where porn is wrecking and destroying mm -hmm. the marriage. And even though they're able to experience intimacy and have that person porn is still a problem lust doesn't go away so wait i agree with the premise that porn addiction is a problem and that needs to be resolved by an individual but the way they're wording this it sounds like they're railing against porn use but calling it addiction and i'm not 100 percent certain i agree with that in fact i know i disagree with that because porn can be a healthy tool in a relationship. Hell, you could be somebody who creates porn as a job in order to raise a family. Porn can be a very useful tool. It all matters with how you're willing to use it, how you're engaging with the medium. I don't agree with this take here the way it's worded, because the way this is worded, like I said, this does not sound like two people arguing against addiction. It sounds like they're arguing against porn use and calling porn use addiction. Maybe I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but that is how it sounds to me. Do you get married? So take it seriously. Like this is our urgent like <laughs> like ask like please take this seriously mm -hmm. and one other um, thing i want to say yeah, on that is it. like we mentioned this in the podcast when you're if you're struggling or addicted to a sexual sin and you're dating essentially like we all know the bible says like lust in our heart it's as if we're committing adultery in the sense that we're unfaithful nope incorrect so while that may be the case in the bible specifically if I am not a Christian, my relationship does not need to be beholden to the rules and laws of the Bible. Moreover, the Bible condones poly relationships, and I'm sure you have some way of arguing against that somehow. It's not going to be valid, though. At the end of the day, if me and my partner have agreed on a set of rules, if me and my partner have agreed on a set of rules, then it does not matter what your book says my rules should be. If I'm breaking your book's rules, I'm not playing your book's game. I'm playing my relationship's game. My relationship has its rules. They're not the rules of your book, nor do they have to be. But let's continue. In our actions, like inside. And so if you're dating someone to get to know them for potentially marrying them, but as you're dating, you're already struggling yeah. to be faithful sexually, then I think that should even be a huge sign to say, Lord, help me to get to become faithful to you first and foremost, yeah. and then faithful. So yeah, you, this is viewing porn use as porn addiction because the use is considered unfaithful. The use is the thing that stains the person. So yeah, no, I have I have to reject the premise completely then to this other person that I could possibly marry while not dating them while I'm committing adultery in my heart yeah. in this sexual way. And so that's another reason why it's so important to say I need to push, pause, break this relationship off, 
go seek intentional counseling from a godly woman, from someone who can really help me walk toward freedom. Go seek counseling from a biased person who is going to have a biased perspective here instead of engaging with this honestly. Don't try to find... I'll, I'll say this. If you are having an addiction problem, don't try to find the most godly person in your life. Find a therapist. Find somebody who is licensed to help, to give you psychological counsel. Do not go for the most godly person you can think of. Go for somebody who's licensed to actually help with those things. And again, this is when we're dealing about porn addiction. Porn use is not the same thing as porn addiction. Because I don't want to start this relationship and continue it on a foundation Absolutely. of unfaithfulness. So instead of using your energy towards getting to know this other person, yeah. trying to, you know, you know, relationships are take time and they're complicated. Instead of using all of your resources towards that other person, like she said, push pause and use it towards finding freedom. So instead of, you know, being in that mm -hmm. relationship, pursue genuine repentance. And that takes time. Yeah. It's hard. It's hu humble. It's, hum you know, like, ah, mm -hmm. it just is so much and you can read more about that in um sec do you are you just gonna keep plugging your shit because i think i think we've gotten through the meat and potatoes of this video and it's it's just it's just now plugging it's all kinds of plugging and look i understand that you want to keep plugging you want to keep plugging away and that's 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 your thing i mean obviously you've got to sell merch i've got a thing that I'm going to be doing later on in the month uh, with 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 stuff like that, so I can I can get it. I understand why you'd have to plug, okay? But honestly, really, instead of plugging that way, maybe you should do something like oh I don't know, plug this way. Maybe you should go to ddlgplayground.com. I mean, there's plugs right here, good plugs too, even in various sizes. They'll help you stretch out. And maybe you could get some of these. And, you know, you could use my coupon code, Cirrus. Uh, that'll get you 10% off of anything in here. And I'm not going to scroll. I'm scared of the other things I'll find. YouTube might end up hitting this video if I do. Uh, but I will say this, though. These come in multiple colors. So if you don't like the video, you can fuck yourself with the rainbow. And if you did like it, well, then I at least hope your orgasm's wonderful. With all that said, though, what do you think of Girl Defines little uh, book reading, book advertisement argument against porn? I found it frustrating, to say the least. Honestly, that's just me, though. But what do you think? I want to know in the comment section below. Let me know down there. Also, if you enjoyed the video, please let me know by letting me know in the comment section below and also hitting the like button. If you want to do so, maybe go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification icon. You'll be able to know when new videos come out. Really, that's like the biggest thing you can do to help me in, in any way, shape or form is to subscribe, hit the bell, see new episodes when they come out. But speaking of help, if you want to do that, then maybe go into the description below. And you can go to my affiliate link down there. Also, you can check out Patreon and other ways you can support the channel and what I do. With all that said, though, thank you all for watching. And as always, everyone, insert end the video tagline here.